Hello and welcome, welcome to this session. So in this session, I am going to talk about the dissolution. How dissolution apparatus can be used very differently for modifying or changing the constituent or the pH of dissolution medium while dissolution run is under progress. Yes, you can do that by using a simple dissolution apparatus like apparatus 1 or apparatus 2. You need not to have the apparatus 3 or apparatus 4 to experience the change into the dissolution medium or pH to your drug product. So I am going to explain you a very simple trick, right, which will definitely blow your mind. So if you want to understand that and if you are really curious now how this can be done, watch out this video. So uh, in case of uh, the dissolution apparatus 1 or 2, it may be let us say IR product or the modified release drug product and if you are performing the multi-point dissolution, you need to withdraw let us say 10 ml of the sample after every 10 minutes and you may have to again replenish uh, the same amount of uh, volume by the another fresh dissolution media and here is the trick now so if for example if you have the replenishment not done by the actual dissolution medium but if you do it by another medium then what is going to happen every time you are going to add the 10 ml of the replenishment volume into the dissolution bowels the composition of dissolution into the bowel is actually going to get changed and that is the the aspects you know which i'm going to explain you which will help you in manipulating or changing the dissolution ph or the ph of dissolution medium while dissolution run is under progress so understand first your requirement are you going to conduct an experiment from let us say acidic pH towards the alkaline pH or are you looking for the change in the pH from alkaline to the acidic. So once you conclude your requirement then you can conduct the first experiment that is with the help of only uh, understanding you know if you want to take the acid what should be the strength of the acid. And if you have finalized onto the strength of the acid, for example, maybe 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid is you are going to be a beginning medium. Then understand which alkaline reagent, maybe sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, or any another suitable reagent, which can be added into hydrochloric acid solution to get the increase in the pH, maybe from 1.2. Once you add the 10 ml of that alkaline reagent, your pH pH may go let us say 3 then another 10 ml added the pH will go to the 5 then the 7 or 8 or 10 so this way by replenishing or by adding every time the 10 10 ml of the uh, alkaline reagent you have checked and confirmed that how the pH is getting manipulated into the flask right once this is confirmed, once you identified the strength of acid and alkali reagent, then now you are ready to conduct a blank experiment on to the actual dissolution. So in this experiment, you are not going to drop use the drug product. You are going to conduct a blank experiment. So pour the 900 ml or whatever volume of dissolution medium you want into a dissolution bouts. Take the alkali reagent into replenishment bowel and then actually conduct the dissolution. Replenish the, uh, withdraw the sample, you know, that may be a suitable volume that if you have decided to withdraw 10 ml, withdraw 10 ml of the sample, for example, at every 10 minutes, if it is IR product. And then you need to replenish, right, the 10 ml by your alkali reagent that you have experiment, experimented into the flask level. Right? And then now once you do that, you need to again verify your thought process by checking the pH of the sample that got withdrawn at every 10, 10 minutes. Maybe initial sample pH may be around 1.2 if it is 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid. 
at 10 minutes you are now going to replenish i mean you are going to withdraw first 10 ml and then you are going to replenish the uh, the 10 ml by the alkali reagent now here you need to measure the ph of the dissolution medium once the 10 ml of the alkali reagent is added into the dissolution bar do it at every time points and then you will understand whether you know your flask data what your ph you got uh, at the several time points and the blank run is matching to each other i mean there could be some changes in the ph values but if there is no significant difference in the ph probably your blank run is also successful once your flask run the blank run is completed and successful then you can plan the actual experiment right then conduct a dissolution for the drug product and then understand as the ph is modifying and if your drug product is let us say class 2 or class 4 which is ph dependent solubility having a ph dependent solubility you can experience you know a beautiful uh, the physical observation and the drug release by changing of the ph and this may help you a long way uh, in understanding probably whether your drug product is comparable to the innovator uh, if you are into a generic industry so i'm going to explain you a very uh, uh, simple example on how we did it few years ago so we were working on to the tell me certain tablets and tell me certain tablets is again the immediate release formulation it is the class 2 molecule and as the uh, the telmisartan tablets if you look at the solubility of the telmisartan it is highly soluble into the acidic ph highly acidic ph maybe from up to let us say 3 and again it has a very low solubility from ph 3 to ph 7 or 6 something like that. i do not know exact range but it is not soluble in the mid ph range from 3 to 6 the moment you cross ph 6 again the telmisartan has a good amount of solubility so if you draw the curve of the solubility of the telmisartan versus ph you will see the u-shaped curve for the telmisartan and we were we have used the same kind of uh, strategy uh, to understand what actually happens if the telmisartan tablets undergoes this kind of ph change we have conducted the dissolution of our in-house product and the R&D product during the same run, 3 plus 3. And we observed a very important point, observation, that in case of in-house product, we could see a, a precipitation once the pH gets in the range of 4 to 6. But we did not observe the same kind of precipitation for the reference listed drug. Now this was just an observation. And that was also get reflected into the drug release at this 3, in between this 3 and 6 pH. Our values were too low as compared to the dissolution of the reference listed drug. Now what this indicated us? This indicated us that you know there must be some difference between our formulation and the reference listed drug formulation. And when we shared this data with the formulator, it was very clear to him that, you know, this is happening because of the incomplete conversion of telmisartan to a telmisartan sodium. Because if you look at the manufacturing process of the telmisartan tablet, though we take telmisartan API at the beginning, but as a process, this telmisartan API must get converted into a telmisartan sodium. And once the telmisartan gets converted into telmisartan sodium you will find a huge difference between the solubility because telmisartan sodium has the very good solubility across the entire gi ph range from ph 1 to the alkaline ph it is highly soluble and that was getting reflected into the reference listed drug because the reference listed drug did not have a precipitation that indicated that there was no telmisartan available as such and entire telmisartan actually got converted into telmisartan sodium 
But when you look at our in-house product, where the precipitation is observed, because of what? Because of the incomplete salt formation. There was some amount of telmisartan freely available and it was not getting converted into a salt of telmisartan, that is telmisartan sodium. So the formulator has understood that he must look into the, uh, the step where the sodium hydroxide solution is getting added, whether the sodium, sodium hydroxide is of enough quantity so that the entire telmisartan will get converted into a telmisartan sodium. So just because of very simple experiment, you know, you can get a very important clue during the product development. So this kind of, <clears throat> you know, out of the box thinking can definitely help you to faster your product development and also, you know, utilize the old traditional dissolution techniques with very great way just by tweaking here and there. So I hope you must have got an you know, overview how you also can implement such kind of out of the box thinking during product development. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of another informative and useful video. Till then take care and bye bye. See you soon.